Chris Cavill, GS14. Well, I'm a big uh, promoter of libraries. Uh, now, the Peace Corps says, if you're smart, no one will know it was you because nobody wants to pick up somebody else's leftovers. So, I, you know, my, my, my co-teacher and my best, they said, this is your co-teacher and your best friend. And I thought, I'll make a decision who's my best friend. She was my best friend. What can I say? Um, <laughs> um, they, uh, they were kind of interested in the library, but there was no printing industry in the Philippines. You could get magazines and newspapers, but no books were printed. And the, the kids didn't have much to go on. When we were teaching English as a second language, that was one of the major things that they did. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting that the, the town really said they wanted a library. They wanted a library with books. And I said, well, OK. Um, so I wrote mom, dear mom, <laughs> please send me some children's books. Well, I got box after box after box of books from all the folks in Oklahoma. And some of it was adult textbooks, so I, didn't, I don't know what they did with that. I told Ching that I really didn't care. They could burn it as far as I was concerned. But there was also a big load of children's books, so I was grateful for that. And the kids loved it. And so, uh, and I, I, you know, aside from mom, uh, there were other books because other people were contacting folks that they knew that had books that the kids would like. And these were Filipino people. So it turned out that this became Ching's project. And I was kind of backing off. And uh, Mrs. Karag was the uh, English teaching whatever guru for the province of, of Cagayan. Um, it, was, it was kind of, oh, speaking of the province of Cagayan, speaking of teachers and things like that, the, uh, the national anthem of the Philippines was written by this first governor general, who was an American. <coughs> Excuse me. And he, he wrote the national anthem, and it was in English. Well, around the, the time of the 60s, that's when the Filipinos are saying, we don't want to be anybody's little brown brother. We want to be a nation. So we, not, we should have our national anthem in Tagalog or Filipino, they called it. Tagalog is really a local language for around Manila. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the Peace Corps taught me all the words to the national anthem. And none of the teachers knew it. And so the principal said, Ms. K. Bell, do you know? And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so for the next you know, the rest of the school year, I'm out there in crack of dawn singing, Bye, I'm Magiliu, Premis of Sinona, Nana, Lama Puso, Sunday, the boy, Bahai, Lu Pong, Hili, Dang, Dunkana, Magi, Ting. This goes on and on. Um, and the kids kind of chimed in. They, they started to, uh, they wanted to see the words in, in print so they could sing along. So I felt incredibly patriotic for a Filipino. <laughs> It was fun. And we ran into the military on a fairly regular basis in the Philippines because we had several bases there at the time. And the girls in our training group, we knew how to uh, get somebody to take us out for a state dinner and invite all our friends. <laughs> so that was the only time we ever got beef. It was fun. Um, but the military guys that really impressed me were the ones that we went on a picnic, and it was near Baguio, which is a mountain town in, in uh, Luzon. And it was just idyllic. And then all of a sudden, here come all these guys in camouflage with guns and everything, leaping through the bushes. Scared us to death. But we got a lot of good stories out of that. You know, those guys were ready to talk. Came back to the States and went to work for the Houston Chronicle, 
because I was a journalism major, and I really hated it because I missed Southeast Asia. So I was going to do a, a aerial dispensation of my met, uh, memoirs and and uh, what do you call it? Your history of work orders. Anyway. Um, and I got a job at uh, Defense Nuclear Agency. No, that was afterwards, never mind. Uh, 